Paulo, thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us. My question to you is on the Dutch approach first. You talked about two challenges during the virtual briefing with us recently. You talked about we have to produce more and we have to make sure that food is available for all. And then you also mentioned that we have to bring four players together around the same agenda, governments, private sector, civil society, and knowledge institutes. But what is the single most critical aspect that distinguishes the Dutch approach from other approaches? Is it something different that you are doing that others may not be doing yet? Um. Well, I can't say it may be very different from what others do, but the, uh, the Dutch have a history in achieving a consensus, working together. I mean, if you are to be successful, you need a good plan, good resources, and a good mindset, a collective good mindset. And I believe that the Dutch are pretty good in building partnerships, which includes the private sector. Paulus, during the virtual briefing, you mentioned a very interesting idea. You said that in the development world, we should be seeing people more as consumers. Can you please elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, we have a tendency to leave out to meet the people we're talking about. Uh, so we tend to leave out. We talk about all sorts of processes and value chains and, uh, and, and models. And we tend to forget that these people <clears throat> which are poor and I would say underserved are not included in our thinking process. These are real people. So if you turn those value chains upside down, you would say, let's start with those people and see is what is it what they need? What is it what they want? What are the aspirations here? And build your value chain on that. And then you may end, if you talk about food and efficient security, with agriculture in the end of the day. And, the, and that from that particular part, is that the production on the land is more and more, let's say, a, a means to ensure that nutrition is secure at the end of the day as a goal. And you can do that best by that, taking that as a starting point. So take the poor as potential consumers, include them in your solutions and work out from there. Paulus, private sector involvement means for many that competition will squash the efforts of the most vulnerable and emerging enterprises in development context. But can one avoid that? Well, if you talk about the private sector, I talk about all the entrepreneurs in, let's say, in an emerging or developing society. I mean, I'm not necessarily looking at multinational companies or what they sometimes tell themselves as multi-local, multinationals. Uh, they do serve, I think, an important position in taking leadership, but I'm looking also to the small and medium enterprises in emerging societies here to allow them actually to do their business. And that in may include even, let's say, entrepreneurial farmers. I mean, farmers which are going to the market and sell their stuff. So don't think only about multinationals, but think about small, and sometimes very small and medium enterprises as uh, still, let's say, the key drivers for local economy. Paul, well, during the virtual briefing, you mentioned that you were concerned, concerned that there are quite a number of large initiatives, but they seem to be disconnected. We are here with the Global Donor Platform. How do you see the role of the platform in donor coordination? Uh, uh, I was a little worried when I learned all these, let's say, big initiatives, one after another. Uh, feeling the future, nutrition for growth, I mean, you name it. So, and I wonder whether these big initiatives could work together better to achieve, let's say, a bigger result. And that's a, that is an issue of governance, I believe. So, I would believe that donors could, uh, could stimulate, uh, in particular locally and globally here, that there is more work, what I would call hands in glove. Those initiatives working closer together, in particular on the local level. I mean, I have no problem on global advocacy, which is important. At the end of the day, we will be judged not by global advocacy, but, but local 
practice, local actions here. Are people better off tomorrow than they are today? That's, the, that's why we are there to achieve it. Thank you very much, Paulus.